Hi, I'm Jeff Cogswell. Today here at GoParallel, we're going to look at a tool from Intel called the Software Development Emulator. The Software Development Emulator allows you to test out instruction sets that may not exist on your own, own processor on your local machine. And the way to find it, the easiest way to find it is just to go to Google and put in Intel Software Emulator. And it comes up right here, which takes you to the main page here. And then you scroll down and there's a brief inter introduction to it and we're going to go ahead and download it and now it's supported on Windows, Linux and OS X. Uh, I'm, I'm going to today look at the Windows version and another time we can look at installing it on Linux. I don't have a, a Mac computer so I can't demonstrate the OS X version but if you do have one you're welcome to try it out. Click the download link and that takes you to this page and the one we want today is download Intel SDE for Windows. And it has you agree to a, a license and go ahead and accept the terms and continue. And this takes you to the actual download page. And up here is the one we want that says win SDE external 7.8.0 uh, win tar bz2. So we click download and it starts it downloading. Okay, I'm in my directory now where I installed the emulator and inside here there's a, a program called sde.exe. That's the main program you want to run and the way it works is you type sde and if you have any command line options for sde itself you put them now which I'm not going to just yet and then you put a dash dash, which separates out uh, SDE's own command line options, and then the program you want to run under the emulator. I've got this little program here called Silk Tests, which really doesn't do any big Silk Plus uh, stuff, which really doesn't do much. Uh, it just prints out some versioning information. And if you have any command line options for your program you're running, then you put them here. So the dash dash is the dividing point. And when you run it, it runs it under the emulator. And that's it. Uh, it'll take a little bit longer because it's running under the emulator. This was just a short little quick program, so it ran really quickly. But it does, run, of course, run just a little bit more slowly than it otherwise would. Now, there's some options in here that you can add. If you do SDE minus help, uh, you can set some different uh, CPU IDs that it would run under. For example, up here is the Intel Quark, which is their system on a chip. So that's pretty cool. You can actually test out Quark on here, Quark, Quark apps on here. And uh, for example, there's a footprint tool and a debug trace. Let's do the debug trace. And so I'm going to back up here. And be, again, because this is a command line option for SDE itself, I put it before the dash dash. So it's footprint. So SDE minus footprint, then dash dash, and then the program I'm running. And it takes a little bit longer to run because it's writing a, a footprint file. Now when I look, I will have a footprint file there. And there it is with some information, load, store, load plus store, code. And there's also a debug trace. So we're going to try that. Let's come up here and just copy it. Okay, now let's try the debug trace option. This one takes, this one runs for a good bit longer because it's tracing every single uh, assembly operation and it saves it to a file, a text file. And it's going to generate a very large text file. So you want to make sure if you open it in an editor that uh, the editor can handle a big file. Uh, we're talking a couple hundred megabytes here. Okay, and we're going to see what we got. We have 147 megabytes for this SDE debug uh, trace dot dash out dot text. I'm not going to open it in my editor. Instead, I'm just going to do more on it. But you can see here's all the assembly line statements, assembly code that is running line by line. Now remember, every single 
opcode is actually emulated. It's not just running it natively on the processor. So that's why it took so long because I had to generate this thing. Okay, now there's a couple other things we can look at here. Uh, when you go to the page here, there's a lot of really good information on running this thing. And uh, on the resources here, under software dash or slash product slash 20856, there's some articles on, on working with the emulator. And this one, fun with Intel transactional synchronization extensions. This one gets interesting because the author, uh, an, in, an engineer at, at Intel named Wu Young Kim, has some really good uh, examples on, on testing this thing out. And it's not just for the emulator itself, but but in dealing with parallel code in general. And he walks you through these examples that have problems with them, code problems. And he asks you, do you think this is correct? Uh, if you don't, can you spot what is wrong? And actually each of these, there's three examples, each of them does have something wrong with them. And these are good exercises for uh, for practicing your parallel programming techniques because you can walk through real world examples. These actually came from examples while they were working. And see if you can spot the problems. And then he, towards the bottom, shows you what the, what exactly is wrong and how to fix it. So look at the examples first before you just read what's wrong. And that'll help you develop your own parallel programming skills. So that's about it. There's much more we can do with the software development emulator. And in future blogs and videos, we're going to look at this tool in more depth. But this will get you started on it.